So uh, last night I continued the uh, conversation about equipment and tonight I'm going to continue that with a um, we're going to go uh, talk about fins. Okay, so this is isn't a definitive um, breakdown of all fins that you could ever buy okay, but it gives you a general idea of uh, what you're looking for in fins. Now remember this is all valid training just spending half an hour watching this video whether you're watching it live whether you're gonna watch it tomorrow it's it's keeping your mind uh, thinking about freediving it's um, keeping your mind ticking over uh, and the concepts and 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 it will keep your muscles in muscle memory it sounds weird but it's true that um, uh, um, if you remember Alan Barber uh, he w once um, before he came to us and was was a freediver he was um, a trampolinist uh, and he was high level coach and he uh, always told me a story about a, a trampolinist who uh, broke their ankle before I think I think it was the Olympics but we'll use the Olympics for this story um, and and obviously trampoline no and broken ankle you can't train at all you cannot do anything and every day their coach went to their hospital bed when they were still in traction uh, and then every day after that when they were at home at exactly the same times that their training sessions would have been and they talked through the exercises and the um, moves that they would have done the training they would have done and and talked it through and after um, after the, the six months or however long it was that they, they weren't allowed to be on the trampoline they got back on and they had not only uh, not lost their, their skills they'd actually improved uh, while they had been out so um, and this makes sense because it's it's only the brain, it's only the subconscious that actually controls the body and you know grows muscles. And, and if we know we're going to be doing something, uh, I'm not saying that uh, that's it. We never have to go to the pool again, and we can just sit down for for an hour every night and think about free diving. But um, it's not as good as that. It's not as good as getting in the pool. But it is better than nothing and if we don't think about it at all we will have a massive step back in in our subconscious our thought processes about it and 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 the word that uh, junior said to me my jiu-jitsu coach is you won't be sharp so when you get back in the water you won't be sharp if you haven't spent um, positive time thinking uh, about free diving and um, kind of going through the motions so I'm talking about fins here, and there's going to be some information there that some of you may may already know most of it, or, or, or even all of it. But just going through it again, thinking about it, um, and, uh, uh, interacting with the information. Oh, that's why such and such wears those fins. This is why we wear those fins. Oh, it makes sense now. Um, or if you're thinking of buying some new fins, or even if you're just you know not actually going to buy some new fins but just you know oh, maybe i'll buy some new fins at some point you're going to listen to this information interact with it and um you will you, you will keep your mind sharp but more than that don't forget our, our sole objective with no tanks is progression so if you come away from this session knowing one fact more than you knew before you've improved you've made progress you've progressed you have succeeded okay so um don't just 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 let this information wash over you really interact with it really think about it get some comments going uh, and if we're watching if you're watching it not watching it live then for sure put up um uh yeah put up some comments in the in in the comments section and um and i'll try and get back to you about it but interact with it okay so uh let's start at the beginning so uh up to the mid 80s uh, everybody was wearing a stereo fins. That's one fin on each foot, very much like Arno behind me. Okay, so uh, stereo fins um, for all activities. When uh, the first world, 
the free diving world records were set. They were using uh, tiny little kids fins and there's some fantastic photos. I should have got one up actually. Um, uh, Bushena, uh, Busha, some, somebody's name like that. That's really shown. I, I can't pronounce his name, but he it was a, a spear fisherman and he set a world record, 30, 34 meters or something. He had a spear gun in his hand, a pair of speedos, a big mask, and these tiny little fins that were essentially uh, bits of, 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 of rubber or wood or whatever strapped to the bottom of his feet. And, and, uh, and that's kind of what they used uh, all through the, the, the 50s. Etc. Uh, Etc. Et when you moved on to uh, Jacques Mayol, he was still wearing stereo fins, um, not quite as good as the ones uh, shown in Le Grand Bleu, but still pretty much exactly the same. A piece of plastic with a shoe on it. It's a, it's a, it's a fin. So up to the uh, 80s in the fin swimming championships, uh, everybody was wearing stereo fins. So and these are the, the standard fare for for free diving so the classic uh the classic look uh, that you get is this beautiful bend in the fins and this you will not get from a cheap pair of plastic fins um these are carbon fiber fins now carbon fiber is um uh, um carbon fiber material with a with a, a glass uh, with a Sorry, uh, uh, carbon fiber uh, material with um, a uh, word escapes me. Plastic, basically, uh, around it, uh, resin. That's it, and they got enormous uh, reaction. So when you fin, uh, you 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 fin uh, you fin down, and when you stop moving, the fin carries on. Okay, uh, with a plastic fin, you tend to stop, and the fin kind of yeah it kind of stops there as well okay so uh, these carbon fins are more reactive so they're more efficient and and they they give back uh, quite a lot of energy so this means you can have uh, softer fins now the personally the best fins in the world are made by uh, marinos uh, the m technique and he he's not a, a free diver or spear fisherman he just makes carbon fiber bits and bobs uh, for cars and 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 you know what what have you, and he designed these fins to have the maximum amount of of return of 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 power back, but um, which means you can have them soft, because you just need to move them and they will move the rest. You just need to move them and they will move the rest. And so he only he does two types and the pure and the spirit, and I'm not quite sure. Um, why you'd use one over the other it doesn't matter because every every pair he makes is unique for you so you tell him how tall you are how big you are how deep you're going what kind of diving you're doing and he'll either pick pure or or spirit and um uh, and he, he only does one one stiffness <laughs> he does say on the website if you feel you need a stiffer fin then tell me but basically he doesn't believe that uh, a stiffer fin works uh, in any sort of way so uh, and he's just a carbon fiber technician that's that's his that's his that's his job so um, you tend to find some spear fishermen will have slightly stiffer fins because um, when we're free diving and we go down we know exactly what the dive profile is going to be we go down we do our thing at the bottom and we come back up and that's it for a spear fisherman uh, they go down and they may catch a big fish, in which case they've got a tug. They may not catch a big fish. So their their um, uh, dive profile is not uh, so stuck in the um, uh, or set. Rather, hang on. She's had all day to attack uh, the cupboards, and and then she does it when I'm online. Okay, so. Um, so, but for free diving, for all intents and purposes, you, there's, you just need soft fins, soft carbon fiber fins. Um, and if you look at the M Technique fins, you can see that there's a spine down the center. So they're not just a flat piece of carbon fiber. They are, um, you know, they've got a spine, so they're more reactive. And this is why uh, Marinos says they're the best fins in the world. And this is why they cost 400 uh, euros for just the blades, a pair of blades. 
You can get other carbon fiber fins. Um, fins for you, uh, for instance, are about 100 quid. And, but you get what you pay for. They are, uh, they are carbon fiber. They are probably better than plastic fins, but um, they're, they're not. They're not going to. Um, they're not going to be the best fins in the world. There are other, some other fins which are quite good uh, and very good, um, and people will argue all day long as to which are the best fins in the world. But pff, it's 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 much of a muchness when you start getting up into the upper echelons. Uh, the um, you know diminishing returns. The more you pay, uh, yes, you get you get better fins, but the difference between them gets less and less. So um, that's kind of carbon fiber fins, and that's kind of why, why you'd why you'd want them. Um, but at the end of the day, if the fins don't fit, you're not going to wear them. So the most important thing to think about when you're buying a pair of fins is the fit okay so try some on uh, no tanks I always have a bag of fins of different makes uh, I don't sell any uh, long fins but I always have different makes so you can try the different foot pockets that's what's important the foot pocket and whether they fit um, and then after that yeah if you want to buy uh, you know up to up 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 your game or up the price to carbon fiber it's it's all very very nice okay so uh, all spear fishermen wear stereo fins because you can move around underwater. Um, but if you, so if you're taking photographs, if you're filming, and you're moving around, stereo fins are going to be the option for you. But if you just want to go in a straight line, very um, specifically, then you probably uh, want to look at uh, monofins. Now, why would you want to look at monofins? Well, um, let me just show you a, uh, a little, a little film. Um, so in the before I show you the film, in the eighties, um, everyone wore stereo fins, and then at the World Fin Swimming Championships, somebody strapped on a monofin, and it was just a piece of wood that he strapped to his feet. And uh, the first year he didn't do too well; it was, it was too stiff. But the second year he won everything, and within like three years, everybody was wearing monofins because and all the world records were nearly, uh, you know, uh, nearly cut in half. It was a massive, massive difference. So now uh, monofins are, are what you want for speed. So here's a, a little... F well, the speed that we've seen this morning has been uh, impressive. Christofari, Drozdov, Kazantsev, Kavinov, Kavitsopoulos, Mazak, Yarlim and Poshat. So away we go. This will be very, very fast indeed. And away goes Kavanov in lane four. And it's Kazantsev alongside in three. And Kavanov is well ahead here. This is very impressive. He's taking it. Kavanov wins. World record for Kavanov as well. Marvelously done. Oh, he's made history, this Russian, in fantastic fashion. It's a new world record set here in Baku for Pavel Kavanov. I think it's just taking a moment for it to set in. He seems to be otherwise engaged at the moment as he knows he has won it by a long way. But a world record to add to winning that race in this exhibition event will make it all the sweeter for the Russian Pavel Kabanov. He has such a fast kick underwater. The speed of repetitions of his kick, a little bit smaller than some of his competitors, but he was keeping the speed of that kick to the maximum, not creating as much drag by making a very small movement but the key is minimizing drag when you're traveling at such speeds whilst generating maximum power, and it's finding that balance in between. Kavanov demonstrated that perfectly. Oh, very, very impressive. Just the speed and comparison to what we see during the, uh, shall we say, regular FINA events. And that speed generated, and obviously, the speed heading towards the wall as well. You're not going to hold back, are you? 
front end of their bodies, their hands, shoulders, head, hardly moving at all in such a narrow streamlined position. Everything being generated from hips downwards. Okay, so uh, that was the uh, European Championships in 2015. Um, I, sh I showed that one. It's um, It was a world record at 13.9 seconds or something. But um, it was beaten last year at the European Championships. But I showed this because there's some beautiful, beautiful slow motion uh, shots underwater. So again, this is going to go up on YouTube uh, and you can watch it back. So... Um, Please, uh, you know, kind of rewind and, and have a look, and you'll see such a beautiful position that these guys, these guys um, hit straight away. So, um, so that's a 50 meters uh, apnea world record um, at, and it's sub 14 seconds, which is just insane. So, um, the Russians uh, are pretty much the number one, uh, very dominant in the fin swimming. Uh, world, the Chinese are close behind, and there's quite a few uh, Germans and, and and other European countries behind them. But the Russians are pretty much number one. Uh, I went actually in 2003. I went to Siberia to a place called Tomsk and and studied under the um, the team there. Uh, studied fin swimming so that I could bring these these information back to the club. And that's how uh, no tanks we train under the Tomsk, uh, the fin swimming uh, system that I learned from Tomsk, um, and uh, and that that's where all our, our ideas come from. And you'll notice that they were all wearing um, uh, glide monofins. So the important thing about glide monofins is um, threefold. So the first is that the foot pockets are at a slight angle. Okay, this means the the uh, blade holds in a much better position. Okay, so um, relative to your legs, you want it to be flat. You don't want it to be a kind of dangling at an angle. So um, they put a little um, kick on the on the toes and makes the the blade lay uh, slightly flatter. Um, the other thing is in front of the toes there's kind of nice shaping which means it's hydrodynamic okay but most important is uh, the wing the blue stripe around the side the hyperbolic um, shape and this is what makes it a glide fin because if you imagine pushing a piece of water uh, push a pushing a piece of paper through water it would it would bend and flip and move out of the way it'd be very difficult to kind of push a piece of paper through water okay and the same thing happens with uh, a monofin so they put this hyperbolic edge on it and this uh, glides through the water and it's the same technology that they use in boats um, and it's it's like this and and it goes through the water like this so this breaks that this kind of round edge breaks the water um, to allow the, the, the fin to go through. So that's a glide monofin. And they are super comfortable uh, because the foot pocket's uh, rather soft, uh, um, super easy to use because they glide through the water. And in fact, they, they, they smooth over any problems you have, which means uh, that you should be using one of these because this is a training monofin and as you can see it's not a hyperbolic uh, the, there's no angle on the on the fin uh, on the foot pockets and there's no kind of molding around the foot as well so there's there's quite a lot of cavitation going on there it's not uh, the best which is why you should train in it so uh, again it doesn't cut through the water very well it kind of moves like this so you have to correct all the time so core strength is super important to keep your monofin straight okay and you'll you'll all know if you've tried a monofin on if you've done the foundation course and tried a monofin on two kicks and then you go off to the side two kicks and you go off to the side okay and that's the fin kicking off um, and and you have to work real hard to control it so of course if you can control it then on uh, competition day then you go back to uh, a glide or you know the day that you want to do a nice smooth dive you go to the glide and it makes it a lot easier okay the other thing is uh, the angle on the foot pocket <coughs> Ooh, bless me um there isn't one on the training fin so you have to really point your toes and this is a stretch that we can do um to try and uh, straighten the, the feet and stretch the, the feet out, the ankles, so that we can lay flatter, 
okay right rather than having a kind of bend at the ankles where the foot is you know kind of pushing down we want to kind of uh, keep it straight and with a training monofin it it kind of forces you to to to, to do that but it's still not bad enough still not bad enough for us we want the worst fins that, that you can get so that's why we training training fins okay they're not actually the worst fins in the world but they don't do much which means you've got to do more so in training scenario you want to be wearing training fins okay the other thing is if you've tried them on you'll know or if you've seen them they're super floppy uh, which means when you get tired at the end of a session you don't bend your knees and kind of push water with the fins because they don't do that they don't work like that they just they're just floppy they're floppy fins so you have to have good technique for the whole half an hour now when i was in russia uh, i was training with the uh, the world champion team for under 14s and um uh, they they start at the age of uh, six or eight and they wear training fins and they will wear training fins for two sessions a day every day six days a week for six months before they're allowed to put a, a training monofin on so this is uh, if you've been to a wednesday you'll know this is similar to the way we we run it um i'm not quite that um harsh so a few months uh, with training fins so you get the technique as soon as you put a, a monofin on on a big monofin and if you haven't got the strength your, your technique's going to go to pot and any training you've done is just going to be kind of uh, rolled back so this is why we wear training fins um, when we're training and then you get the benefit of the monofin on, on competition day or long fins on holiday i have no the cat is just Lyra hello uh, so she's had all day to attack the paper but she does it when I'm on online <laughs> okay so um, that's a quick run through uh, fins um, the other thing that people ask is why do we have a monofin session on um, on Wednesday nights or Tuesdays in Brighton and you know well, I don't want to do a monofin I don't want to be a monofinner um, I, I'm just interested in stereo finning but and this is the this is the key thing when you train stereo fin finning you it helps if you've got good core muscles to drive the fins but you don't exercise your core muscles very much when you're stereo finning it's very hard to use it because you're so used to using your legs for walking running jumping etc you just tend to use your legs it's very hard to move over and use your core muscles and develop them and strengthen them when you're stereo finning but when you're monofinning you have to use those core muscles you have to lose use your glutes okay to have a good technique so we train monofinning to train those muscles and then when you've got them you can go back to stereo finning and they will be there to be used so monofin training improves your stereo finning but stereo finning doesn't really improve anything okay uh, it does improve a little bit obviously but not nearly as much as as, as monofinning does so we do monofinning because we need uh, the three points of monofin which i you've, you've heard me say before uh, strength technique and flexibility and we're really working on those really uh, drilling down and getting all three of those uh, you know strong and good and this will help with stereo finning so you can monofin 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 and put your stereo fins on and you will be better of course there's some technique that you need for stereo finning but um, if you uh, training with no tanks or even if you're training anywhere else uh, when you're playing games you're probably going to be doing a lot of stereo finning developing the stereo finning technique anyway okay you should be playing games super important to play games um, because um, having perfect scenario perfect setup as I've said before with a perfect neck weight and a perfect glide and a perfect suit and everything's perfect if something goes wrong you haven't got the capabilities to, to change uh, what you're doing so you train we're outside those uh, boundaries and uh, and therefore on competition day as we call it competition day or when you're on holiday or when you've got that smooth dive that you want to do you can you can make everything a little bit more 
are close to perfect. It's never going to be perfect, so don't train in perfect. Train with lots of variety. And the same with stereo fitting. Just moving around the pool, changing directions, going to really drill and develop your stereo fitting. So it's super important that you play games uh, from that perspective. And it's the same with, with all sports. You don't just practice the very narrow things, you practice stuff outside. Which brings me right back to the very first, uh, or maybe it was the second session that we did, and I talked about uh, exercise. So that's fins, I finished the fins. Okay, finished talking about fins. And just go back to exercise and uh, what you, I'm not gonna say should, but what you could be doing for free diving now. So obviously you've got some flexible uh, flexibility exercises you can be doing. So doorway stretches, which um, I will cover um, uh, later this week. I've got a few more bits of equipment and I'll do doorway stretches later in the week. Um, yes, you can be doing yoga or the Adabanda, um, pulling up on a perineum, etc., etc. All these fantastic yogic ex breathing exercises, uh, or that's a, a body exercise, uh, uh, and muscular exercise but you've got breathing exercise you can be doing meditation um, breath hold stressed and unstressed but the easiest and possibly the most important is all body exercise so that is uh, move, moving your entire body so running's good you know it's not bad for you i mean it's bad for you because it you know destroys your joints cycling let's go cycling cycling is good for you okay but it's very specific and very um very single uh, single movement uh, in one plane okay so there's no dynamics uh, dynamics to it so try and try and do some exercise uh while we're in lockdown um, that involves whole body exercises. You know, even if it's just throwing a ball back and some forwards, uh, when you go for a run, walk with with the, you know, with with your family, take a rugby ball and throw a ball around. Um, or when you go, if you do go running, don't take the path. Don't just do a, a, a movement of, of running. You can go, you know, take the off road path and move move break break that kind of rhythm and try and get the whole body involved. Um, which is again, which is why we do the exercises we do when we're in the pool. So hopefully uh, that's kind of giving you some ideas about fins and giving you some uh, ideas about what to think about with your training. Um, I have got some, some people sent me some uh, diagnostic videos. I haven't got around to um, looking at them yet, but I will do, don't worry. So if you sent me a training video, I'll get around to it and, and reply to you, uh, or rather a video of you finning and I'll give you a diagnostic in the next couple of days. Um, that's it, really. I'll see you tomorrow night. Um, any questions, don't hesitate to put them in, uh, in, the, in the comments. And uh, I'll see you tomorrow night at 7.30 for, um, it should be the conclusion of the uh, equipment uh, sessions. So, um, yeah. Ciao, ciao. See you later.